Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. Before we start, make sure to subscribe if you are not and give a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Anoplolepis gracilipis, formerly known as Formica longipis, is an ant species belonging to the Formicinae subfamily and the Anoplolepis genus. From Latin, Anoplolepis means without scales and gracilipis is the union between gracilis, thin, and peas, legs or feet. The genus Anoplolepis consists of a total of 9 species, plus 5 subspecies, all of which are originally from Africa, with the exception of the Gracilipes, which is the sole member of the genus to extend its range outside its, this area. There is much disagreement on the origin of this species, which was first described by Jordan in 1851 in India. Since then, several authors have described A. gracilipes as native to some or most parts of tropical Asia, which is supported by some evidence such as symbionts from Asia and others. Other researchers considered Africa as the origin of this species, since the genus Anoplolepis is known to be almost exclusively African, as we said before. Striking aspect of uh, Gracilipes distribution is how the earliest end surveys found it already widespread over Southeast Asia and islands of the tropical Pacific and Indian Ocean. By 1895, when the world's end fauna was still very poorly known, Gracilipes was already recorded from virtually the full range of its current known distribution. Noplolepis Gracilipes is commonly known by one of two names. The first and most common is the yellow crazy ant, and the second but more scientifically correct is the slender leg ant. The name crazy ant arises from its characteristic behavior that is to run erratically in rapid movements when disturbed. The name slender ant comes from their long and thin stocky legs. Yellow crazy ant's total body length is around 4 mm, but when accounting for its leg length, that can easily triple. As such, it is considered as a medium-sized ant, with a long slender body, with long legs, large eyes, and extremely long antennae, and a yellow to orange, orange coloration. Workers are monomorphic, displaying no physical differentiation. Ants can be categorized into nocturnal, diurnal, and crepuscular species, according to their circadian rhythm of foraging activity. Yellow crazy ants could be considered a nocturnal or crepuscular species as they forage more intensively at night and early morning. Activity on the surface of the ground was observed between 6 and 9.30 am and between 4.30 and 11.30 pm. Food is discovered rapidly, even more rapidly and in lower numbers than Paratocrine longicornis or black crazy ants. Described as a scavenging predator, it preys on a variety of litter and canopy fauna, from small isopods, myriapods, mollusks, arachnids, and insects to large land crabs, birds, mammals, and reptiles. Just like Wacophila, or black crazy ants, the yellow crazy ants workers subdue their prey by a method known as spread eagle, where workers pull the prey's appendages in different directions while spraying them with formic acid. In addition to these protein-rich foods, yellow crazy ants obtain carbohydrates and amino acids from plant nectaries, and especially from honeydew excreted by other insects, which it tends on stems and leaves of a wide variety of tree and shrub species. A factor that may promote the success of invasive ants is their ability to exploit these carbohydrate resources. It has been considered that these carbohydrate-rich resources promote ant invasions by providing high-energy fuel for greater activity, growth, and the establishment of dominant supercolonies, as well as drive the aggressive behaviors of some invading ant species. Anoplolepis will generally only demonstrate aggression towards other ants when defending resources. Other than that, they normally only display evasive or indifferent behavior when individuals or groups are confronted. But when involved in a battle with another ant species, yellow crazy ants will curve its abdomen up toward the head of its attacker and spray a defensive substance from poison glands located in the abdomen. This secretion is highly toxic to other ants as well as to other individuals within the colony, and it is very effective defense. 
This is one of the reasons why when capturing wild colonies, one should use an open container, since the queens and workers could well suffocate on their own defensive acid. Anoplolepis chrysilipes is primarily a species of the lowland, tropical rainforest, preferring moist forests and other humid habitats, and it is capable of invading both disturbed and undisturbed habitats. Nesting requirements are generalized. They nest under leaf litter, in cracks and crevices in the soil, usurp land crab burrows, readily colonize bamboo sections when placed on the forest floor, and in canopy tree hollows. They also nest under the ground substrate, in urban structures, and in a, even in human materials. For colonies kept at 26 Celsius, or 79 Fahrenheit, and around 70% of relative humidity, the brood cycle is as it follows. The egg stage lasts between 12 and 15 days, the larval stage lasts between 7 and 10 days, and the pupal stage lasts between 11 and 15 days. And so, a complete cycle for agrocilipes would be between 30 and 40 days. At low temperatures, 20 to 22 Celsius or 68 to 72 Fahrenheit, the brood cycle is extended to 54 to 60 days. Workers live approximately 6 months and the queens live for several years. Alates can be present year-round, but in most cases, initiation of brood follows the beginning of the wet season. As in the other invasive ants, A. gracilipes normally practices a polygynous, polydomous social structure and the new colony is normally established by dependent colony foundation, that is, queen or queens leave their mother nest for a new nest site with workers, which is also called budding. Nonetheless, elite queens can fly, and queens and males have been collected by light traps, but dispersal by flight and independent colony foundation seldom occurs. No reports on solitary queens or incipient colonies with nanitic workers of yellow crazy ants have been published until July 2016, when four solitary queens with some eggs under stones were found and collected in a botanical garden in East Java, in Indonesia. The queens were kept individually in artificial nests. These nests were put in an incubator with constant temperature, 26 Celsius, and were not provided any prior water for keeping the condition of claustral colony foundation. After 40 days, the workers reared claustrally by the queens were nanotech, having a head width significantly smaller than those of mature colony. Solitary founding queens or founding colonies with nanotech workers as produced in the laboratory have never been found for this species in research on ants for the last 25 years at several places in Southeast Asia. In ants, independent colony foundation is an ancestral trait for species with L8 queens. And so, it is thought that the areas where the yellow crazy ants commonly found a colony independently may be its native locality. These findings shows that yellow crazy ants practices both the independent and dependent colony foundation, which is a fantastic discovery for this species. But the new discoveries don't end here. You won't believe what scientists found next. They found that yellow crazy ant workers are not sterile, and they are able to produce both trophic and reproductive eggs. The reproductive eggs develop only into haploid males and those trophic eggs appear to be the main food source for larvae in the yellow crazy ant colonies. Isn't this amazing? But the most significant dispersal method is none of the mentioned before. It is the human-mediated dispersal, where colonies are inadvertently transported to new locations by humans, for example, in potted plants, containers or even rubbish. In recent years, globalization of trade has accelerated the rate of biological invasions and led to disturbances and destruction of native ecosystems around the world. Social insects, especially ants, are regarded as one of the most devastating groups of invaders, because ants have important roles in various ecosystems as keystone species. Yellow crazy ants are ranked as among the top 100 of the world's worst invaders and are considered one of the world's most widespread ecologically and economically damaging ant species. And like many other invasive ant species, it can reach extraordinarily high population densities and substantially modify ecosystems. In contrast to the majority of ant species, 
Yellow Crazy and Super Colonies are characterized by a combination of traits such as polygyny, in nest mating, and budding, that ensure the continuous production of generation upon generation of reproductives that all stay within the super colony. In favorable conditions, Yellow Crazy Ants can attain incredible numbers, high densities of 10 million per hectare, nest size averages about 4,000 individuals, and reported rates of spread between 0.1 and 1.1 meters per day. But some populations of yellow crazy ants were found to decline or disappear, which may be good news to the local ecosystems. Invasive species are thought to be vulnerable to several factors that may lead to population declines such as these. The low genetic diversity resulting from inbreeding, migration, overexploitation of resources, and pathogens. Unexplained population declines such as these represent an unique opportunity to investigators. Identifying the drivers and mechanisms behind such declines could have important applications for invasive species management worldwide. And this type of population decline seems to be happening regularly all over the world, with many different invasive species, not just only ants. I cannot wait for more results on this topic. Well guys, this is it for this week's video, I hope you have enjoyed it, and now as usual, I come ask for your support in subscribing, giving a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. See you next week, be safe, take care, bye!